So now let's talk about how you can turn heat into potential energy and kinetic energy. This is basically an introduction to heat engines. Okay. Um, to do this, we've got a gas, a working gas. This is an ideal gas. It won't undergo a phase change. It's always going to be a gas. Uh, it's in this cylinder, right? Um, and there's a piston that can move up or down, and it's frictionless, and it doesn't leak. Uh, and there's three quantities we can talk about for this thing. The first thing we can talk about is the, the, the internal energy. And delta U is the increase of internal energy, okay? What internal energy is, U is is the net, or the total, right, kinetic energy of the gas. So remember that, that a gas is just a bunch of little particles bouncing around, right? Okay, so these little particles, if you add up all that kinetic energy, just like you saw in my little demonstration device, right? If you add up all that kinetic energy, you're going to get the internal energy, right? The other thing you need to know about uh, internal energy is that um, if... The internal energy increases, then the temperature must increase because temperature is proportional to kinetic energy. These are intrinsically linked. Internal energy and temperature are intrinsically linked. Double the temperature, double the internal energy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? Okay. If the internal energy falls, then the temperature must fall. There's no way to change the internal energy without changing the temperature. Okay. So understand that. Okay. This you can just write temperature. Okay, related to temperature. There it is. Yeah. Okay, the second thing we can talk about is heat that flows into or out of the system, right? Okay, positive Q is heat flowing in, right? And then negative Q is that heat flows out. And of course, a heat engine actually has to, has to do both of these things. Okay. Um, and then uh, the final thing is we can talk about work. This is work done by the system, right? So in order for this thing to do work on the world, in order to make your choo-choo train go down the track, right? That is positive work, okay? Now, negative work is when we do work on the system. So it's basically the, the engine does negative work, which means we do work on the gas. It doesn't do work on us, okay? So, um, and by the way, when you are using your engine to uh, slow yourself down as you go downhill, right? Of course, you're, that's what you're doing. It's called compression braking. You're, you're allowing the compression of this gas to slow your car down, okay? Now, this is a formula and this is a basic expression of conservation of energy that we're gonna use, right? Um, and that is that if heat flows in, okay, if heat flows into this thing, right, right, if we're looking at this guy here, okay, if heat flows in, one of two things or both happen, right? Either the gas gets hotter or it does work or it can do both, right, okay? But that's the notion, right, is, is that we could, if, if, the, if the internal energy stays the same, we can have heat flow in and have the gas do work, right? So basically the idea of a choo-choo train, right, is that we put a little fire under this thing, right, and we heat it up and this thing, you know, pushes that piston out and the choo-choo train goes forward, okay? Uh, in the case of your car, of course, we explode a fuel-air mixture inside this thing and push that out, but it's the same idea. So let's look at this formula on the next slide. Oh, and that, this is just conservation of energy, right? If heat goes in, it's got to go somewhere, so it can either raise the gas or it can the, the, the gas can do work, okay? So if heat flows in, the gas gets hotter or the gas does work and or, right? Okay, so you need a riot. Here's a, here's a tricky problem, right? You need a riot that's 45 joules of work compressing a gas in a cylinder. Okay, so if it's compressing, doesn't that mean it's moving in? So doesn't that make this negative 45 joules of work? That's what's tricky about these, right? So our work is negative 45 joules, okay? And then 23 joules of heat flow out. Well, heat flowing out, that's also negative, right? Oh, this is so tricky. Minus 23 joules, right? All right, so just write this down, right? That positive is heat flowing in and this and this, right? Okay, so then U is what we're trying to find, change in U. Well, let's see. Um, I'm thinking pretty much that this has to be positive 22, doesn't it? Right? So I'm just going to add 45 to both sides. So 45 plus negative 23 is 22. Okay. Joules. Okay. So let's see. What is the change in internal energy? There it is. 
What happens to the temperature? Well, remember, if the internal energy goes up, then the temperature must go up because internal energy is the net kinetic energy of the gas and temperature is proportional to kinetic energy, right? If, the, if it's going faster, then it's a higher temperature. Okay, so let's look at another example. Yeah. Bend over. I don't get that one. Bend over. Ben. Ben. Duh. Anyway. Okay, so heat flows into the gas, right? So positive Q, right? So positive 34. Okay, then let's see. The internal energy rises by 59 joules, so positive 59. Hmm. Hmm. Doesn't this have to be negative? This guy's got to be negative, right? So, so uh, plus work, right? So I'm going to subtract 59 from both sides. 34 minus 59 minus 25. Okay, so, so uh, which way did the piston move? Well, the piston had to move in. So now let's think about this because this is sort of an interesting thing to think about, right? Um, if you think about this in terms of energy, uh, the internal energy went up by 59 joules. 34 joules of that energy increase came from heat flowing in, and 25 joules came from the piston moving down. Now, how does moving a piston down make the gas hotter? Because if heat doesn't flow in or out and we move the piston down, then this has got to go up, right? If this is zero, if heat doesn't flow in, and this guy is... Um, positive, right, then the piston has to be negative, right? Zero equals a positive plus a negative. I'm just saying in general, right? Well, a piston moving down, if that piston's moving down, if a gas molecule bounces off the thing, it's going to come off faster. This is like a ping pong slam, right? <laughs> if the ping pong ball is coming toward you and you move the racket a ping pong paddle really fast toward the ping pong ball, then it comes off faster. Right? Uh, we do that in soccer. If you want to clear the ball and the ball's coming toward you, you move your foot toward the ball. And of course, if the piston moves out, and we'll talk about this more in class, right? But if the piston moves out, then the molecules will bounce off slower, which is sort of an interesting thing, isn't it? So, so the piston itself can raise the temperature. Obviously, heat can flow in, and that'll raise the temperature. Okay? I think that's it. I think there's some more examples um, that follow, but, but those are my examples for this.